Welcome to Fierce Feminine Leadership, the success podcast for women in business. Each week, we feature interviews and advice to help you step into your power and lead your way. Now, here's your host, women's leadership expert, Eleanor Beaton. Hello, this is Eleanor Beaton, and you are listening to Fierce Feminine Leadership, the success podcast for ambitious women in business. Welcome to episode number 26. And today we're going to be talking about how you can take control of your online brand, how you can be discoverable online so that the right employers, clients, customers, and partners can actually find you. And to talk about search engine optimization, digital marketing, and all things online marketing related, I've brought on a incredible expert for you guys. Her name is Mindy Weinstein. She's totally brilliant. I had the opportunity to uh, hear her speak about a year ago at a conference. She just blew me away with her wit, her brilliance, and the quality and caliber of her teaching. You know, when it comes to the world of online marketing and SEO, it can be, it can feel like a jungle, you know, to the lay person. And Mindy has an incredible ability to deliver cutting edge information in a very practical way that actually helps you get results. I have implemented many of the things that she has taught me to do and seen incredible results from them. And I'm so delighted she decided to come on the show to share some wisdom with you. And let me put it this way. When Facebook wants people to come in and train their staff on how to do SEO and on digital marketing, Mindy is the person who gets the call. Okay, so she is the expert to the experts, the teacher and advisor to the world's top experts in this stuff. And here she is throwing it down for all of us. Mindy Weinstein is the president and founder of Market Mindshift, as well as a digital marketing strategist and national speaker and a published author. She has taught SEO and social media to companies of all sizes, from small businesses to major brands. Mindy's digital marketing strategies and techniques have catapulted brands online and transformed businesses. And as I said, I have implemented the strategies she has personally given to me and seen incredible results from them. Mindy has frequently appeared in the media with television interviews that aired on Fox, NBC, and ABC. She's been quoted in the Huffington Post, the Washington Post, and the Arizona Republic. She's been interviewed on Bloomberg Radio. She earned her MBA at Arizona State University and is currently working on her PhD in psychology with an emphasis in technology. So this woman is really looking at how technology is affecting how we think and really our psychology. So brilliant woman. Can't wait for you to hear the interview. We talk about the things that you need to be doing and thinking about to make sure your website is working as hard for you as it can and really creating results for you, how you can get more visible online, some of the big trends that you want to be watching. And again, this is for lay people. Mindy started out her career as a writer and she is able to think clearly and communicate clearly, which is so critical for those of us who do not self-identify as techies. Um, The other thing that you need to know about Mindy, you know, take a listen to the interview. She has also agreed to come on and do an exclusive training for our tribe. Okay, so she's going to be doing an hour long interview specifically for women entrepreneurs in the area of online marketing and SEO. And you definitely want to check out that training. And to do that to register, you need to go to Eleanor Beaton podcast.com forward slash 26. So Eleanor Beaton podcast.com forward slash 26. Enter your name and email address, and we will let you know. We will get you registered for that training. It's going to be happening in July. You do not want to miss it. If Facebook is hiring this woman to come in and train their people, you you want to have her wisdom at work in your business. So eleanorbeatonpodcast.com forward slash 26 to get thyself registered for this training with Mindy. Again, she's brilliant. We have so much fun on the interview. I think you're going to love it. Here she is, Mindy Weinstein. Mindy Weinstein, welcome to Fierce Feminine Leadership. Thanks for having me, Eleanor. So where are we reaching you today? Where are you based? I'm based out of Phoenix, Arizona. 
Awesome. But you actually do a lot of traveling for your business, do you not? I do. I I travel a lot and I'm actually working on minimizing that a little bit. But uh, yes, I'm, I'm all over the place. Awesome. So I had the opportunity to meet you a couple of months ago. You were speaking at an event called Speak, Sell, and Serve, teaching uh, the audience of authors, coaches, entrepreneurs, and experts all about online marketing, SEO. And I was so impressed with what you've, with your knowledge and what you've accomplished in this field. At the time you were working for an organization, you have recently launched your own business. Really curious to know how you got into this field in the first place and then why you decided to start your own business. So I guess we'll start with how you got into the field in the first place. Okay. And actually, I love answering that question. You know, I, because my story is a little bit different than most people who are in my field of digital marketing, but I got my start back in, it's like towards the end of 2007, beginning of 2008. And at the time I had been uh, doing marketing for, but within the personal finance industry. And I was looking to make a career change. And I had a family member at the time, he is a web developer and he knows how much I love to write. And so he made a comment to me of, you know what, you're thinking about changing careers. What about writing for websites? And I actually laughed because I'm like, no way. People actually pay you for that. And mind you, this is a long, this is a while back, you know, when things were starting to speed up online and more people were buying into it. Well, at that time, I didn't even know that that necessarily was a career to write for websites. And, um, but I decided to start and I started as a freelance writer. I was writing for all sorts of websites. And then I got picked up by an agency located in Virginia and uh, they catered towards lawyers and doctors. And so they, contracted me in the beginning as a writer, then they liked how I was performing, asked me to manage their team of writers, which at the time there was only about five of them. And so I did. And by the time I left, they had close to 40 writers and editors. And um, I kept getting promoted within the company. So I came in as a writer, then was put into a management position. Then I was asked to take over the SEO team. So by the time I left, there was 45 people that I was in charge of. Uh, my title was director of SEO and content. And then I got recruited by another company, which is one of the oldest SEO companies out there. And they hired me on as an SEO manager and um, as a trainer to train their digital marketing classes. So I came in a different route because most people don't come in like I did, but I got to see all different sides of digital marketing and I have loved it. Every day I've been in this industry, it's exciting to me because if you know anything about online and you know about Google, you know about being Yahoo, all the search engines, things change almost on a daily basis. So it's exciting. It's stressful, but it's exciting too. You know, I forgot that you started out as a writer. Um, I started out as a writer as well. And I think that's probably one of the things that makes you such an effective teacher because, you know, writing, clear, the ability to write clearly is really the ability to sort of think and convey information clearly. So I love that that's where you started out. And it's so interesting because when I think about people who are practitioners of SEO, I don't don't typically think about writers. Is it common? No, it's not common to start like, and that's what I was saying. It's not common really for a writer to turn more into the SEO side. And it's a good route to go because if you have the capability to write great content and you know what it takes to appeal to your reader, and then you can add the SEO component into it. I mean, you're in a very good position. So um, it's not as common, which I feel lucky for that, for that reason. Absolutely. Now, I want to turn to your business in a moment. But, you know, you talked about how you get hired on as an individual contributor, you know, in your first it, at this agency as an individual contributor. And a few years later, you're the director of SEO managing a team of 40 people. Can you, you know, if you were to look back over that experience and that, you know, fast rise, um, what sort of universal traits or skills or behaviors were you demonstrating that other women might learn from who want to step onto that fast path to fast promotion? You know what? Uh, I love that question because for me, it was not being afraid to ask. It really was not being afraid to ask. So when um, they initially approached me about managing the content team and I was doing a great job with that. So then when I saw that there was, and, and I was helping the company grow, I mean, really my two departments were the highest 
revenue generating in the company. So for that reason, I got noticed. And I think, you know, just the ability to organize and communicate with people definitely helped me manage that writing team so effectively. And then I saw an opportunity of the SEO team, the manager was doing not so great job. And so I saw that there was an opportunity there to step in on that side. So I just wasn't afraid to ask. I just said, you know what? I went to the president of the company and I said, I've been doing a great job at what I'm doing. And you know that. And I would love to take over the SEO team as well. And I think for, I know some of the women in professional fields for me personally, so like friends that I have that are out there, you know, the ones that move up quickly are the ones that, you know, they're bold and they go in there and just say, Hey, look, I proved myself. I'm ready for the additional responsibility. And the same on the same notion too, I wasn't afraid to ask for the compensation too, which is nerve wracking. And I'm all, you know, I was always nervous at the time, but you know, if you don't ask, you're not going to get those opportunities a lot of times. And the other thing of course is, is it's, it's, the fact that you're asking and then what you're asking for. I love in your career path, you're really demonstrating something that is so key to advancement for women within organizations, especially corporate organizations, which is that you took, um, you moved to another department. It was, you know, an upward move and also a lateral move into another, you know, another department of the agency. You know, one of the big career derailers for women, especially within corporate organizations is too narrow a functional focus. So that ability to kind of look out there, see what's going on and get experience under your belt in different departments. Really, really neat career path. So thanks so much for that insight. Oh, you're welcome. So you decided to start your own business. I think in the last year, do I have that right? You do have that correct. So this is after, you know, being the trainer in SEO who who trains people at major organizations, uh, major online companies and so on. What prompted you to go out on your own? Well, first I'll preface with, because um, when you say it that way, it sounds a lot more bold and riskier than I normally am because I'm not a risk taker. How I mentioned, I wasn't afraid to ask questions or ask for things, but when it comes to actually taking that financial risk, I, it was a very hard decision for me and it was one I considered for a long time, but what finally caused me to make that transition, there was actually two reasons. You know, we started off the interview talking about how much I travel. Well, that was a big part of it. You know, I have, I'm a mother, so I'm a working mom. I have two boys that are in in elementary school and I was gone a lot. I mean, I was each month I was gone a few days, at least a few days out of the month. And then my travel was supposed to increase this year. So that really I would end up being gone almost a third of the year. And I just had to make that decision of, you know what, what will I look back and regret more? Will it be that, you know, will I regret more that I didn't spend time with my kids or will I regret it more that I didn't take that step back for my kids? I don't know if that made sense, but it was really, I was looking at which would I regret more, the career and travel or missing out with my kids. And so I just decided, you know what, I can never get back that time with my kids. And it just kind of prompted me to make that decision, to make that move of, you know, it's time. Plus I knew I could do it. I've been doing it for a long time. And because I was in a training capacity for a while, I know how to explain things to people in terms that they can understand. Because in my industry, we tend to get very technical, and it, or as my husband calls it, geek speak very often. And we lose people as we're explaining the work that we're doing. But because of my training background, you know, I've been able to articulate you know, how you go about improving your digital presence. And like I said, I just knew it was time. For the women who are listening to the show today who are like you were a few months back in a great corporate career, but they're ready to step out on their own to start their own business, what advice would you give to them? Well, for me, as I mentioned, you know, I'm not, I'm risk adverse, especially on the financial side. And I think a lot of us are. And the advice I would give is, is plan, plan it out see, you know, plan out what the next few months will look like. What will the next year look like? What will it take to get clients and how much, what's the bare minimum that you need to bring in each month to pay your bills and to still have, you know, that a good lifestyle. So, um, for me, it was planning was the big thing and just knowing what steps I wanted to take immediately once I was on my own. Got it. So you started market mind shift this year. Tell us about the business. What do you do? Oh, absolutely. So what I do um, at Market Mindshift, I help people not only improve their visibility with their personal 
in corporate brands because that's what I'm all about is improving your visibility online. But I also help people create those lasting relationships with their audience. So really it's not just the, I'm going to show up at the top position of Google, but also I'm going to have the right message that is going to convert those people. And so that's what I help businesses do. So whether it's full service, meaning that I am helping them create the digital marketing strategy and implementing it for them, which a digital marketing strategy would include things like, you know, social media presence, you know, what is your profiles? How are those optimized? What kind of posts are you creating? Um, you know, the content on your website, also the technical structure of your website too. So all of those things, whether it's full service, but then I also have people that I work with that, you know what, they'd rather do it themselves, whether it's, they just want to learn it or for budget reasons. And I help those people too. So I just give them the plan. I give them the training and then I let them take them there. So you've got, um, you kind of answered it already, but I want to go into it in a little bit more depth. Tell us what your business model looks like, because actually when it comes to women who are getting into their own businesses or who, or who are starting their own businesses, uh, sometimes they can actually approach that with without a clear business model, without actually being very clear about how exactly they're going to make money in their business. So tell us about your business model. What does it look like? What are the different revenue streams? Where, where does that come from in your business? Oh, that's great. You know, it's interesting because I talked to a business coach even before I went on my own and he mentioned, just like you said, you know, clarity, you know, it comes with clarity. That's how you, that's how you succeed is when you have clarity in your business. And for me, my revenue streams, I, I played around with it a lot and I still, I'll just be completely candid. I still kind of, there's things I'm trying out, things I'm realizing don't work. So this is where I'm at now. Um, but for me, my revenue streams, one is training. So going in and training organizations that they want to learn digital marketing and they want their staff to do it themselves. And so I'll go into an organization and I will train. Um, the other revenue model I have is creating those digital marketing strategies and plans. And when I say that, I mean, I'm talking about a document. Like I actually just delivered one to a client. It was 60 pages, which is a lot, but we went over it. But it's analyzing everything from their competition to their target audience. So identifying what's called their personas that they're going after. So that's their audience. And um, determining what content has to be created, what kind of social posts, everything. So it's like all the, everything you possibly need to succeed, it's all in this plan. So that's one revenue stream I have. And the other one, like I said, is implementing. So doing the full service because there's some people that they just don't want to mess with it. And so I'm able to go in and actually do all that work for them. And so tell us a little bit about your ideal clients. Who are you working with? You know, what types of companies are going to bring you in to do training, to do their strategies, to do the implementation? Where's that sweet spot for you? So for the training, it's been mid-sized companies. I mean, that's what I've seen. So the ones who bring me in to do the training, they're the mid, the medium-sized businesses and in all different industries. I mean, I just went in and did some training for a moving company. You know, I mean, so there's all different things. Everyone needs digital marketing. And um, so that's one side. That's one of my personas that I go after are those medium sized business people. And then the other one is the entrepreneurs and small business owners, because they're the ones that are a lot of the do it yourself. Give me the plan. Let me do it. And um, they're another big part of my market. And you know what, ladies, if you do what Mindy says, um, you will reap the rewards. So I think it was in October, Mindy, you were explaining to me how to do video SEO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how to do video. So I went and did it. And, you know, it's amazing. Now there's certain search terms that I'll look up on YouTube and my video is like in the top kind of six. It's on that first page of YouTube, not Google yet, but a first page of YouTube, which is really exciting, you know, um, to, to be able to actually rank for keywords. So, <laughs> so. Well, and you know, YouTube is the second largest search engine. So that's really a big deal to be showing up like that. So that's, Congratulations. It is. Thank, well, thank you. Thank you for, for, for <laughs> telling me to do that because, you know, wonderful advice that you don't necessarily hear. And when it's delivered in a way that it's when it's delivered in a way that you can hear from somebody who's not kind of speaking the technical jargon, it's uh, it's so much more effective. So um, I love, you know, what you've shared with us about your business. One thing that I wanted to ask you, you know, we, we talked a little bit, you mentioned the importance of building a personal brand. I notice a lot of, um, of entrepreneurs are building businesses around their name. You decided to call it Market Mindshift. Um, can you tell us, a little, give us a little bit of insight into that decision? You know what? And that was something that I did spend a lot of time um, trying to decide which I was going to do. And 
Cause I do have my own website. I have mindyweinstein.com. And that's actually one that I use when I'm going to speak. And if people want to know more about me on that side, you know, as a speaker, uh, but it was something that I went back and forth on. And the reason I chose to go with a corporate name is just for the opportunity of growth, you know, and the beginning, a lot of course the work I'm doing is my, is me. And that's how it works when you start a business. But I see future growth and I see potential of um, just expanding the business. And so for me, it made sense then to use a corporate name versus just the personal brand. But even with that being said, I focus on building my personal brand. So if you search my name, you're going to find me. (laughs) And then I'm also working now on the corporate brand too. So I do both. Like I don't separate the two, but as far as my business goes, um, I just decided to go with the corporate name. So one of the things that you talk about is is the importance of discoverability. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us, you know, what I, I think it's kind of clear what that means, but I want to make sure that our listeners get the whole grasp. What is discoverability online? Why is it so important? Well, most people, I mean, you think about your behavior. If you want to learn more about a person or about a business or about a product or service, you're going to go online and you're going to search for it. Now, it used to be that people just go straight to Google and do searches and A lot of people still do, but a lot of people now also go on social media. So you have to pay attention to what is your presence on the search engines pages. So that's Google, Bing, and Yahoo. And also what kind of presence do you have within social media? So enhancing your discoverability, make sure that people could find you. And of course, you want them to find you when they search for your name or your business name, so your personal or your business. But you also want to be found for other terms that describe what you do. So if there's a product you're selling, you want people to be able to find your website when they do a search. If it's a service, the same thing applies. So you want to make sure, again, that people can find you because that's what consumers are doing. And just think again about your behavior because what you do is very similar to what your ideal customer is doing too. Uh, yeah, it's so interesting. I don't know why we sometimes think that our ideal clients are you know, like aliens <laughs> from another planet who don't act like us. I know it happens all the time. That's why I say that. And I say that and uh, cause I still do some, a lot of, um, I do a lot of training classes still. And that's something I bring up is, you know, a lot of times as marketers, we behave one way, but then as humans, we behave a different way. Like just like you <laughs> said, I mean, yeah, they're, they're just like us. too. That's right. Mindy, it's a new hashtag. Uh, marketers are people too. <laughs> Exactly. That's a great one. So what are some of the big trends you're seeing when it comes to the world of online marketing? I mean, there's so many places you can go to this, but what are some of the most interesting trends, like the top sort of two interesting trends you're seeing that are going to be relevant to the women who are listening today? Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's, there's so many different directions you can take with it. But the biggest things, um, the trends that I see are really the um, video that's nothing new though. Mm -hmm. So video, like you said, you've used video and I love that you just gave a success story. Like it worked for you because the way it works now, if I'm talking about, you want to show up when people search for your service or your product, of course, for your brand, there's a lot of competition. So when you're just go to Google search and there's a lot of competition there. So the trends are seen is that video is the way really to get noticed. So if you can create videos that uh, answer customers questions or your clients questions that give tips that really showcase your expertise those are going to help you and that's a big trend and same thing with audio so video and audio because people are also listening to podcasts in their car they're listening to podcasts while they work out plus there's even a new audio uh, social media app called anchor that's growing in popularity so really it's those other kinds of medium just outside of only doing text because so many people are used to just going online and you do an article, which you need to do. Those things are important, but you also have the other forms of content too. So those are big trends that, um, that I'm seeing now definitely that are growing. I love those trends because I love video and I love audio. <laughs> so I feel like, I feel like those trends were made for me. So I am very <laughs> excited about it. Well, and what's great about it, if you don't want to do video, if you like kind of shy away about the idea of being on camera, well then do audio. Like there's, you have an option. And like, what's great too about video and audio is so much more personable because when you can hear someone, I mean, it's just, you feel like you know them. I mean, you definitely do. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I will routinely have new clients and people, you know, reach out saying, I listened to your podcast or I saw a video and it, it allow it gives you a, a mechanism to connect with people in a way that you can't connect. You know, as much as I love writer and I'm a born writer, mm-hmm. I cannot connect with people in the same way through, you know, a blog post that I can through a video or, or a podcast or it's just a different side. It makes you more three dimensional, I suppose. It's- Right. And that's what it is. It's a different side. And so, I mean, they're all important. I mean, it's just that the audio and video are growing more now, but they're all important because search engines still care about their, you know, about words. And so we care about those too. But like you said, I love that what you just described, it just makes you um, more dimensional and it's a credibility issue too, because when people can hear you and you're, you are articulating your message and you're able to answer their questions and it really appears that you know what they're going through it just builds that trust and that credibility. And you know, there's one more aspect that I I don't think, you know, we necessarily talk about it a lot, but it's the idea of competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you think about every time you add on another layer of technology, you know, so you go from the the blog post to the podcast, you go from the podcast to the video, especially if you're doing professionally produced videos, which for me is important. You know, on Facebook, sometimes I'll I'll, uh, do a, you know, I'll shoot a short, cat video on my phone or my computer and get that up online. But typically I'm doing more professionally produced um, videos. And to me, you know, one of the most important concepts in a business is to understand what your competitive advantage is and then to exploit that advantage. Exploit isn't necessarily a great word, but what you're going to do is really leverage that competitive advantage. And I think of it, you know, every time you're adding on another layer of complexity, you know, the pool of people who are willing to do that is so much smaller. So if you're one of those people who's willing to do the podcast, willing to do the videos, willing to get on Anchor, you know, you are, um, you're able to, I guess, become more discoverable. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, you're 100% right. It's exactly it. And, you know, video has been around a long time. Uh, Different forms of audio have been around. But it's like you said, not everyone wants to put in the time because most of the time what we hear or what I hear from people is, you know, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I can't do that too. Well, make sure mark your calendar. You can do it. You can block off your schedule. You can do those things. And like you said, it makes you different than all the rest out there because most of your competitors are not going to be creating a video on a regular basis. They're not going to be creating audio. They're not building those relationships that way with their target audience. So you want to make sure you're doing it. And it is very competitive online. You know, way back in the day, like especially when I got started, it was a lot easier to show up in search results for different things, but it's changed. There's a lot of people online. So you want to do the things that are going to make you stand out. And, you know, speaking of that, I talk to so many um, entrepreneurs and I'm going to start with entrepreneurs, then I'm going to move on to my corporate ladies in a moment. But, you know, Mindy, I talk to so many entrepreneurs who are, you know, creating things online. They want to take their business online and it is a competitive marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so I would love for you to share, you know, some, your kind of top, three tips or insights that that our listeners who are entrepreneurs who are trying to, you know, move their business online, or have their, you know, offline business, but really show up online and market themselves online. What insight or tips would you share with them about things that they should be thinking about? Okay, well, the first thing is your website. And I'm going to talk about social media here in a moment because that is part of the puzzle. But the first is your website. That's really your hub. That's where you're going to be sending people to, that's where you're going to convert casual visitors into actual clients or into qualified leads. So your website has to be one of the first things that you consider. And with your website, there's a lot of different parts that go into the website because it's not just a matter of, you know what? Okay, great. I'm going to get a website. I'm going to go get a WordPress uh, theme, which I love WordPress. You know, I'm just going to put it up there and I'm not going to worry about it. It takes more than that. So you want to make sure that you have the right technical structure because there's a very big technical component of your website. You know, um, my husband and I joke a lot about, okay, I'm in this line of work. I talk about technical things, but recently I bought a car and I liked the outside of the car. I thought it looked fantastic. I liked the inside of the car and I went without my husband, by the way, it was a used car or pre-owned. I think that's what I was supposed to say. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Pre-owned. I'm not a used car. Sorry. It was pre-owned. And so I went without him and I purchased it, but I like, I did the whole walk around. I looked inside. I had them even detail the car one more time. I'll tell you one thing I didn't do the whole time I was there. I never popped the hood. 
and looked under the hood because I don't know what I'd be looking. I didn't even think about it. And I got home and within a couple of days, I started having problems with the car. So like we popped <laughs> the hood and sure enough, like it's like corroded. Like there's different areas that are like just the batteries corroded. See, I don't even know. I can't even describe the engine. There was just stuff wrong with it. But as soon as you pop the hood, I'm like, oh yeah, that doesn't look good. <laughs> Well, it's really the same thing with your website. You have to make sure what's under the hood is working correctly because if you can't get your website indexed by the search engines, you're never going to rank for anything. So doing all the other things that like creating content, putting videos on your website, well, your, your website's not going to rank. So you need to make sure you have the right technical structure. And you can even just Google um, you know, free website analysis tools, things like that, um, to find an easy way to do it. But make sure the technical side is right. And then the other thing, so there's a technical side of your website. That's your hub. So you have to focus on that. And then the second thing is working on your message. So what is the message that you're trying to portray to your ideal audience online? And when I say message, I mean what is on your homepage, what is on your landing pages on your website, you know, what are your blog posts, what are you really putting out there for people to find? And you want it to showcase your expertise. You want it to build that trust. You want to show that you're an authority. So the message is a huge thing. And then that really carries over into the third area, which is you with all those things, so you have your website, you have the right content and message on your website, and then you have the right message within social media. That's your third thing. You want to make sure that you are on the major social networks, and then also your audience might be not only on the major ones, talking about you know Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, but they might also be on Pinterest quite a bit. They might be on Instagram. They might be on Anchor, which is a new one. So you have to also know where your audience is and make sure that you are there and you're engaged. So those are the three things. So when you're thinking about, okay, I want to build an online presence, number one, I'm just going to go through real quick. Make sure you have a technically sound website. That's the first and foremost. Two, work on your message. And three, stay involved socially. Those are the big things. So, you know, here's here's a, um, a theory that I want, want to run by you. You know, one of the things that I have been thinking a lot about in terms of building my own business online, I have an, my offline business. I also have a business, you know, online and I and I use my online presence to fuel my offline business. But one of the things that I'm seeing and that I have kind of accepted and made the commitment to is that if you're going to move into this space, you essentially become your own publishing company. Like I remember, you know, years ago when I was doing a lot of writing uh, for websites, for magazines and so on as a journalist, you know, people other I, I was paid to create content for other people's platforms. Now I pay myself to create, you know, <laughs> content for my own platform. Um, but, you know, so so my sense of things is that as an entrepreneur in this space, if you're really looking to make inroads and be discoverable online, you kind of have to see yourself as your own kind of mini publishing empire. Obviously, that's something that I take kind of seriously and is important for my business. What are your thoughts on that kind of theory for other entrepreneurs looking to make it in the online space? Oh, I would say that's true. Because actually, and taking even a step further, one of the things that um, I tell tell people that I am consulting with or as I'm speaking is create an editorial calendar for yourself. So it's one that would be for your own blog. And by the way, your website needs to have a blog and it shouldn't be a separate blog. It needs to be on your website. So your domain slash blog. I mean, it's there, uh, but you want to have an editorial calendar where you schedule out in advance your blog posts. And on that same calendar, schedule out your videos that you're going to create and any podcasts or, or if it's going to be audio that you're putting on Anchor. And then also make sure that you schedule out social media. So you can create posts and you can schedule them in advance. There's enough programs out there. But you also want to go back, of course, and be engaged because there's nothing worse than a one-sided conversation on social media. But an editorial calendar it, that's what the big publishing companies do. That's what major websites do. And you should do the same thing as an entrepreneur. Otherwise, the day will, will start and then it will end. And you'll be in bed thinking, oh, I never wrote that blog post. Oh, I forgot to do that video. Oh, I forgot, you know, whatever it might be. So you have to plan it in advance. An editorial calendar is the way to go. Yeah. Okay, awesome. A little bit of tough love there for people. You know, <laughs> if you're not publishing on a regular basis, you're not really in the game. And I say that with love, but I mean, I see it all the time. People wanting to move their business online and they, they're not getting... Um, they're not getting the degree to which they need to be content publishers. They got to see themselves that way. Make sense? Makes sense to me, absolutely. <laughs> to that, I was nodding my head. You couldn't, you, you couldn't hear that. <laughs> so, uh, 
I am, you know, so I, I know that there are women, professional women who are listening, and I would love for you to share some insight for them in terms of why it's important for them to be discoverable online. You know, I'm still working with some professional women who don't have headshots on LinkedIn. <laughs> you know? oh. I'm like, come on. But anyway, they don't have. So, so why is it important for professional women to be discoverable online? It's actually, we're at the point now, if you aren't discoverable, or if you don't, like you said, LinkedIn, if you don't have an image there, it's the question of why, well, why, how come you're not showing up or why, yeah, why don't you have your images in the different social profiles? Because the, the norm now is that people will be able to look you up and they will find you. And no matter what industry you're in, even if you're business to business, you're still working with other people. So this, I mean, this really applies to the corporate women or the entrepreneurs. People want to know who it is that they're working with. And you want to make sure that when they search your name, that you know what shows up and you can control that. And that's the things that we've been talking about, you know, and even if you don't have your own website, if you're involved in social media, you can control it. If there's images, so going back to the images, if you want to have those images out there and you want them to be professional, professional shots, especially on LinkedIn, because like when people do a Google search, there's image results that show up. So you want to make sure that you are controlling what even shows up there too. So it's important. People are going to search you. That's our normal behavior. Going back to the whole thing about marketers and, and human beings, our normal behavior, I don't know about you, Eleanor, or the other listeners, but I will look people up. It doesn't matter what it is. I will look them up. If I'm going to be working with them in any capacity, I'm going to look them up. So again, control what they see. Great, great insight. And then any tips for the professional women who are listening in terms of a couple of quick things or, or foundational things they can do to really improve their online presence? Well, I, I would start with take a hard look at your social profiles. So go back through on you know Facebook, you know, what kind of information do you have posted on there? And that's even just about you. You know, if you have that professional image, you know, make it then more professional. Use descriptions that talk about what you do on LinkedIn because social media is really th I'm focusing on that because that's the easiest to go back and make a difference with so go back and look at your LinkedIn profile you know what other terms can you use in there that are going to help people learn more about you plus discover you when they're searching on LinkedIn directly or if they're just doing a regular search so look at your social profiles and see how you can improve there if you do have your own website and I'm, I'm sure some of you do and some of you don't, but if you do have your own website, I would do a technical review of it. And like I said, you can just Google, there's enough free tools out there that you can do a technical review, but make sure things are sound because that's something that there's little tweaks you need to make. You might make just a few tweaks and all of a sudden your visibility has gone up. Sometimes it's something simple. So just go back and look at what you already have and what can you do to build upon it. And do you recommend that corporate women have a personal website? Not necessarily. So that's what I was saying. Not necessarily for, for perfect. I didn't have one. So going back to what I've, so I'll talk about me as a human. <laughs> <laughs> Mindy's a human too. As a human. Um, for many years, I actually did not have a personal website because when I first got started in the industry, I wasn't out there. I wasn't speaking. I was just focusing on my team and building, you know, building what I, what I was tasked to do. Um, but as my career progressed and then I got, so for those women, you know, there's not necessarily a need to have your own website. But then when I stepped into the world of now I'm being asked to speak at conferences, at industry conferences, at conferences outside of my industry, that is when I knew I needed to have my own website. And when I first started, I was very clear, you know, that I worked for this particular company, but this is my personal website and people could learn more about me. So it was when all of a sudden I got out there more in the public view and I was a spokesperson in a way for, you know, what I do for a living and, and also even my company. That's when I took the step of having my personal website. But if you're not out there like that, it's not a necessity for you. Got it. Okay. So another, uh, you know, quick question about, um, about you and, and really the art of selling you. So you are, there's a lot of women who are listening who, who sell themselves. We sell ourselves. That's a big part of, you know, while our businesses, as they grow, we may bring in other people, but in the beginning, 
you know, people do business with people. And so we are truly selling ourselves. Do you have any insight that you can share about how to do that based on, you know, your experience in business? And I know that you haven't had your own business for a long Mm -hmm. time, but you have certainly developed, you know, a really solid profile. You've been quoted and, you know, you've been interviewed on Fox, NBC, ABC, Mm -hmm. quoted in Bloomberg, the Huffington Post, the Washington Post, you know, any sense um, about about kind of the art of, of selling yourself? It's looking for, for me, and I'm just going to go with the angle I've always taken because I know for me personally, like selling myself, just saying like when I'm talking to people, this is what I do. And I start talking about it. I have a harder time trying to actually like make a sale in a way. Some people are really good at it. And even from on stage, the approach that I've always taken is to educate. And so that's always been my, my even approach now that I'm on my own is I educate other people. And so, um, for those women who are like me that, you know, have a harder time with it and um, you can take that education route. And so the way that I've done that is I put my name out there to speak at more conferences, because if I can share my expertise, it opens up the doors to talk to more people, to get those leads, to turn those leads into actual clients. So for me, it's been big into the education side. And then also, as you just mentioned, the media, it's getting your name out there. So that's another way too. And still with the education approach. And so there's one website, and I know you've heard me mention it before, that help a reporter out. So help a reporter out. It's um, Harrow is the short term for it, but help a reporter I think it's just .com. You can go on there and you can subscribe. There's a free subscription. And then there's also one where you pay as little as $20 a month. But there are reporters that go on there and they are constantly asking for experts that they can quote. So you could even do an alert for your particular industry. So for me, I get alerts for digital marketing. And I can see reporters that are asking for someone who can help them that they can quote in an article. Well, that's a great way, in my opinion, to get your name out there, which then turns into sales and it's exposure. And so those are ways that, um, I have worked for me and I think they're very actionable and, you know, every personality is different, but for my personality that has worked well. Yeah. Mine too. Mine too. I love the education first approach. Mm -hmm. So you are doing a PhD in psychology and digital marketing and sort of the interact digital marketing, the interaction between the two. Do I have that right? Yes, it's well, it's a really long title, the PhD, but it's, I usually cut it off after the technology part. But I'm working on a PhD in psychology with an emphasis in technology. So the big part of it is, you know, it's of course learning more on the psychology and diving deep into that, but also how technology makes an impact on us. And so it just seemed very fitting to go for a degree such as that one. What have you learned that has blown you away the most? You know, um, I. Gosh, there's so much because I actually put into practice what I read pretty and I learn in my courses. But what has blown me away is the the triggers that cause people to take action. And I knew them somewhat, you know, in marketing because a lot of, you know, testing and seeing what causes people to whether it's to order a book or to click a button, those kind of things. But just diving in more into the psychology behind it of what is it exactly that's prompting them to do something. And so a lot of that is motivation. So motivation out of all the psychology areas that I'm learning has just been huge for me. So motivation and again, learning what those triggers are with people. Oh, interesting. And what's the most, uh, what, what's your favorite trigger? <laughs> well, so I don't know if it's going to come off the wrong way. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, I hope it does. <laughs> but it's really, it's the persuasion of how people can be persuaded. And I honestly, I mean, you know, it makes me look at myself as a consumer going, okay, how many times did I get persuaded to buy something without realizing it? You know, and it's just the language that you use or even just the tactics of, you know, there's different things like um, the persuasion that has to do with groups and, and different things like that. And so that's been for me the biggest thing, but it's so interesting. That's actually caused me to read more books just on persuasion alone because I just it's eye-opening. A lot of that's very eye-opening. Yeah, it's fast. Well, in an age where we are totally inundated with messaging and we're contributing to it as well, I think it's, you know, it's part of, you know, being aware, being an aware right. consumer. So I love that you're doing your PhD. You already have your MBA. You have two Correct. children. Do I have that right? Yes. You okay. Have that right. You've got a business and you started your PhD while you were still traveling like a gazillion mm-hmm. days a year. Right. Uh, can you tell us about about specifically your morning routine, because I am I am fascinated with people's morning routine. And then let's move into how do you make this all work together? 
Well, actually they go hand in hand. <laughs> so I get up really early in the morning. So, um, well, early by my family standards. So I'll get up in the five o'clock hour before everyone else is awake in the house. And well, the first thing I have to have coffee. I mean, I'll admit that I, I can't do anything without coffee. So the first thing that happens is the coffee pot is brewing. And then that's when I actually work on my school, my homework or papers or reading, whatever it is that I have that's um, assigned to me for that week. I start out in the morning. So it's quiet. Nobody is awake in my house. I can spend, usually I get about an hour and a half before there's movement from any Anybody or before I have to get the kids off to school. And so I have a full hour and a half to be able to spend um, on my studies. And I spend that hour and a half doing that. And then, then even before I start my work day, I will actually create a daily schedule. And I'm very big into blocking time. So I will block off, you know, from this hour, this is all I'm going to work on. Because I don't multitask. I don't, I don't, I have my theories on multitasking, but I will just focus on one thing at a time. And so I create my schedule and then I start my day that way. So it's um it's how I'm able to balance the PhD and the family life and the work um, that you mentioned all those things. It's really getting up early and having that time to myself. And I do the same thing even on Saturday morning. And so I'll get up really early before everyone else. And my family's not stirring usually till eight o'clock on Saturday, so I get a good three hour window in there. But I found that that's how I was able to add more time into my schedule was just to get up a little bit earlier. And so what time do you go to sleep? I have to, okay, so that's the thing. I have to go to sleep by 10. And yeah. I'm to sleep by 10. It's five o'clock's not looking so great. <laughs> I know. The discipline of getting up early in the morning comes at the night. Right. I always find, right? Exactly. And I'm not, I've never been a night person. I've always been a morning person. So even when I was an undergrad, I didn't pull all nighters. I would just get up super early instead because my mind works better then. And so for me, it was just kind of cutting out things that weren't necessary at night. Like, did I really need to watch that TV show? No, I'll just go to bed instead. Then I have that time in the morning when I could be productive. It was making those, those choices. It was definitely a sacrifice. But when I decided to pursue my PhD, I made the commitment to myself that I wouldn't have it impact my family. And, um, and I've been able to do that so far. I'm a couple of years in, but you know, I didn't want it to, to take away from my kids. I didn't want it to, um, you know, just really take away that time I could be spending with them. But at the same time, I want them to be proud. I want them to see that I am working towards something. So I tell them about it, but I make sure I still, you know, get enough hours in with them each day. I love that. And I think it's a really critical point. It is about little choices a lot mm -hmm. of the time. It's not about these, you know, it was obviously a major choice, you know, to do your PhD, but right. the ability to complete all of those things and ultimately build a fabulous career is coming down to little choices. Do I watch Outlander? Or <laughs> do I, go to bed? I just go to sleep. Right? As tempting as that may be, yeah. um, it is such a such a pleasure to have you on the show. And you know, you have some incredible resources. You have an amazing uh, digital book uh, available on your site. Can you tell people a little bit about where to find you, and also about um, this resource that you have that they should go immediately <laughs> to yes. check out? Yeah. So, um, well, my website is marketmindshift.com and on my website, I have a free digital marketing guide and I am, well, I'm big into things that are free, but I'm really big into free tools. And so I kind of was very vague when I threw out there that, oh yeah, just Google this tool and you can find something. Well, I have a whole list of tools in this free digital marketing guide that tell you, okay, you want to do keyword research here's some free tools to use. Oh, you want to analyze your website to make sure there aren't technical problems? Here's a free tool you can use. So it's filled with free tools, but I also have tips in there. So I, I have tips on how you actually optimize your website, and I have tips on how you create that content that's going to really convert people and is also good for search engines. And because I've spent so much time training, I definitely work really hard on making everything actionable and understandable. So I do the same thing with the digital marketing guide. So you can go to my website. There's an order form. You can download it for free. And then um, definitely you can connect with me. I'm on all the social networks too. Um, but those are also on my website. So you can see that information. Awesome. And we will link to your site as well in the uh, in the show notes of this episode. Mindy, thank you so much for joining us today. I so appreciate your insight. And I can't wait to uh, to see you again soon. I know I can't wait to see you too. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.
Today's episode was brought to you by Bold Woman Thought Leaders, my brand new group coaching program for thought leaders, experts, coaches, and consultants who are tired of playing business and are ready to get known, land clients, and make an impact. If you dream of traveling the world, standing on stage, speaking from the heart, and getting paid to do it, if you want to do deep, meaningful work with influential clients who are happy to pay you well for your expertise and advice, then I invite you to join us for Bold Women Thought Leaders, a four-month group coaching program for smart women who are ready to grow their businesses by becoming a recognized expert. If you're interested in joining a small cohort of thought leader entrepreneurs who are ready to either launch their business the right way or dial up their sales and growth with a solid business structure designed specifically for people who sell insight and advice, then please reach out to us to learn more about Bold Women Thought Leaders, our four-month group coaching program. We will send you the details. Simply email us at fierce at eleanorbeaton.com. That's fierce at eleanorbeaton.com. All right, Fierce Ones, there you have it. The brilliant, hilarious, witty, charming Mindy Weinstein, the expert to the experts when it comes to SEO and online marketing. I was so delighted that she gave us her time to be on the show to share some incredible information. And again, I remind you, if you are a woman entrepreneur, and you are interested in learning more about how you can be more discoverable online, how you can have your ideal clients, partners, referral sources, and you know, for those of you who are working within the within organizations, employers find you. So if you want to do that, Mindy's going to be offering a brand new free training webinar to the Fierce Feminine Leadership Tribe. If you want to get on that webinar, this is your chance to ask her questions related to your business. She'll be on there answering those questions. What you need to do is go to eleanorbeatonpodcast.com forward slash 26. EleanorBeatonPodcast.com forward slash 26 to get yourself registered for that free training. It's going to be happening in July. Only those of you who register are going to have access to the training. So you definitely don't want to miss it. Thanks again for listening. And until next time, stay fierce. Thank you for listening to Fierce Feminine Leadership. Be sure to head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. While you're there, leave us a fierce review. When you leave a review, your name is automatically entered into a monthly draw. Each month, we'll draw one reviewer to automatically receive a private coaching session with women's leadership expert Eleanor Beaton. So remember, head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. Then leave us a review for your chance to win a private coaching session with Eleanor Beaton. Go to eleanorbeatonpodcast.com and sign up to get your free cheat sheet, the five critical leadership skills of seven-figure businesswomen. This free download will help you diagnose the exact skills you need to see major growth in your business and career. Head over to eleanorbeatonpodcast.com and get your free download today. <laughs>